In this video, I'm going to talk about several concepts that you'll need to know when studying vectors. So for the rest of this video, just like the last one, I will be using the set of all complex numbers as an example to demonstrate some of the ideas involved. Uh, so the first uh, concept that we're going to talk about is the concept of a linear combination. So what exactly is a linear combination? So let's say I have two vectors. I'm going to call it alpha, and I'm going to call it beta. And let's say I have another vector called gamma. And gamma is going to be defined as some scalar multiplied by alpha plus another scalar multiplied by beta. So this process that you see over here, this is what we call a linear combination. So if we multiply scalars to vectors and then we add up these vectors together, then this will be a linear combination. So you can see here I've expressed gamma as a linear combination of alpha and beta. So whenever you see this term, a linear combination, just keep in mind it's referring to this process of multiplying scalars and then adding them up. So the second concept that you need to know is linear independence. So if I have two vectors, I'm going to use alpha and gamma as an example again. And I have a third vector called gamma. And let's say gamma could be uh, expressed in such a way. Let's say gamma could be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta. If this is indeed the case, we will say that gamma is linearly dependent on alpha and, gamma, uh, and beta. If gamma cannot be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta, we will say gamma is linearly independent of alpha and beta. So all this sounds very abstract, and we can best explain this with an example. So let's say alpha is equal to 1 and beta is equal to i. So these are just vectors we're pulling out from the vector space, uh, the vector space that is the collection of all complex numbers. So let's call this vector space V, and this is the vector space that contains all possible complex numbers. So alpha and beta are just two elements within this vector space, so 1 and i. And let's say I have another vector from this vector space. I'm going to call it gamma, and it's equal to 1 plus i. So obviously we can express this as alpha plus beta. And so you can see that this is, we can obviously express uh, express gamma as a linear combination of alpha and beta. So you can say that in this case, gamma is linearly dependent on alpha and beta. So another example is if we say alpha is equal to 1 plus i and beta is equal to 2 plus 2i and gamma is equal to 2 plus 3i. So you can try however you want uh, to try to express gamma as a linear combination of alpha and beta, and then you'll see that you actually can't do it. So gamma cannot be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta. And in such a case, we'll say that gamma is linearly independent uh, from uh, of alpha and beta. So this is what I mean when I say linearly linear independence. If gamma cannot be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta, then gamma is linearly independent of alpha and beta. So this concept will commonly use, be used on a set of vectors. So let's say I have a set of vectors, let's call it a, a E1, E2, all the way to En, so it's a set of n vectors. If I say that this entire set is linearly independent, that means each and every single one of these vectors cannot be expressed as a linear combination of all the other vectors. So there is actually a, a formal test to test whether this set is linearly independent or not. So this test is not included in the textbook. I'm just going to include this because I think it's kind of important. So let's say I have this set of n vectors and I want to know whether they are linearly independent or not. So one, uh, the formal test is that we consider this expression. Let's say I have a1 times the first uh, vector plus a2 times the second vector all the way to a n times the nth vector. And let's say this is equal to the null vector, the zero vector. And if I have this whole expression here, then the only possible way to cons to, for the left-hand side to be equal to the right-hand side is for all the scalars to be equal to 0. If the only possible solution to this is for all the scalars to be equal to 0, then we can say that this set of vectors is a linearly independent set. So that means each and every single one of these vectors cannot be expressed as a linear combination of all the others. And this actually makes perfect sense because if I, if say for example, E1 
is linearly dependent of uh, uh, to all the others. Then we can easily set a one to be equal to one, and then we can set all these other scalars to be equal to uh, certain values in such a way where this whole expression is actually a linear combination that uh, gives us the expression uh, negative e1. And in such a case, you eventually you just get e1 minus e1, and of course this is equal to zero. So it's in such a case, uh, this will not be the only solution. You can see that we also have another solution where a1 is equal to 1 and all these other a's are equal to values such that you will obtain your e1. So that if e1 could be expressed as a linear combination of all these other vectors, you'll see that we can admit other solutions aside from this one. So if for this expression the only possible solutions is for all the scalars to be equal to 0, then this will imply that all these vectors are linearly independent of each other. So this is the concept of linear independence. So the third concept that we're going to talk about is the concept of the span. So what exactly what do I mean when I say span? So if I have a set of vectors, let's say, once again, alpha and beta, and say this is, these are vectors from the vector space V, and let's say all other vectors within V can be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta, then we will say that alpha and beta span this vector space. So once again, let's explain this with an example. Let's say, uh, once again, this is the set of all complex numbers and alpha is equal to 1, and beta is equal to i. So you can see that all other vectors within V, so let's say I have another random vector a plus bi, you can see that any other vector that you can think of can be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta. So you can see that this, of course, is equal to this. And so in such a case, we will say that alpha and beta will span the vector space of V. So we actually don't need to limit ourselves to two vectors. We can, of course, admit other vectors within, within this uh, set over here. We can say gamma is also a, a vector within this set, and it's equal to 2 plus 3i. And then, of course, we can always use these three vectors to construct any other vector that you can possibly dream of within this set of all complex numbers. And so we would say that alpha, beta, and gamma will span this set, because any other element can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. So this is the concept of span. So the fourth concept you need to deal with is basis, and this actually is a closely related concept with uh, the concept of span. So if I have, let's say, a set of vectors, uh, once again, let's say alpha and beta, if the and let's say these are vectors from the vector space V. If these vectors, first of all, if they span V, and they are linearly independent, then I will say that this set of vector vectors will form a basis of this vector space. So you can just check out the examples that we used last time. So obviously you can see that uh, for the case of all complex numbers, alpha and beta, these are obviously linearly independent vectors. You, you, can, you, you can't construct one with an i, you can't construct i with a one, so obviously these two vectors are linearly independent. And you can see that all other vectors all other complex numbers within this set can be expressed as a linear combination of alpha and beta. So you can see that these two conditions are satisfied. And so that's why uh, you can say that the vectors alpha and beta will form a basis of the vector space V, where V is the collection of all possible complex numbers. If I can, uh, if I uh, add, if I uh, include gamma within the set of vectors, you can see that although the set of vectors alpha, beta, and gamma they do span the vector space V, they are not linearly independent because I can express gamma as a linear combination of alpha and beta. And so you can see that this second condition is not satisfied for the set, uh, for the set of vectors alpha, beta, and gamma. So this would not, so alpha, beta, and gamma, so this set would not form a basis, while this set would form a basis because both of these uh, conditions are satisfied. So this is the concept of a basis. So the fifth concept and the final concept is related to something called dimension. So this is a very simple concept. It's related to basis. So what it means is essentially if you have a vector space V and it has a basis that is equal to a certain set of vectors, let's say it has n vectors for its basis, then the dimension of this vector space is simply the number of vectors 
within this set, and in this case it's obviously equal to n. And in the case of complex numbers, you see that our basis has two vectors. So for the set, uh, for the set of all complex numbers, it has a dimension of two, because we need two vectors to form a basis for this vector space. So this is the concept of a dimension. So one final thing I should mention uh, is that for a given vector space v, we can always construct a set of vectors. Let's say this set is equal to e, and this is a set of vectors. Let's say we have n vectors, where this set is a basis of this vector space v. And in such a case, that means any other vector that we have within this vector space, let's say I have a vector within v called alpha, then because this is a basis, then any other vector within this vector space alpha can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. And so what that means is that if we have specified a basis, if we want to express another vector alpha, we don't actually have to write this whole cumbersome uh, expression out every time. We can simply express alpha as a, a string of the scalars attached to each one of the vectors that form the basis. So instead of writing out this whole cumbersome expression, we can just use this uh, string of scalars to represent alpha. And another way, another keyword to express this uh, string of number is called a tuple. So tuple is really just a fancy term to describe a string of uh, a string of scalars, a string of numbers. So another common way to to express uh, such a collection of numbers is to use a column vector. So it is also common to use a column vector to specify these numbers that will be multiplied to these bases, uh, to these uh, uh, the vectors that form the basis in order to obtain our vector alpha. So these are two ways of expressing the same thing. And uh, I should also introduce a term that is often used, and it's not included in the book, but you'll often see this term. Uh, it's called a coordinate vector. So this string of numbers that you see here, they are, it's actually called a coordinate vector. And you usually see this concept in normal uh, linear algebra books. So let's say I have a vector alpha. Usually the way you would express this is that you would give it square brackets. And then you would, uh, let's say that basis is called, uh, is formed by a set of vectors called E. And we'll just put an E subscript here to signify that the string of numbers that you get is related to the basis E. So obviously if you change the basis, you can actually change the basis. So for any vector space, you can actually always change the basis. There are infinitely many uh, different uh, combinations you can you can use as long as they satisfy these two properties, then you can always use any set of vectors as a basis. So if you change the basis, then obviously these numbers will change. So that's why when you use the square bracket to signify you're talking about a coordinate vector, you will also add this e here at the subscript to signify which basis you are using. So this is something else that I think you should know.